giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now. FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. As we, As we get, get deeper, deeper and deeper into the deep space, space, deep space, we've got a race, we've got a race, we've got a race, we've got a few comments, comments, comments on the comments, comments on and we can get that, that we can get less than red, red, and yellow, red, and yellow. And yellow. Before we're going for a first day now, now, I'm Connor, now, I'm Connor, I'm Connor, I'm Connor, I'm Ben, and I'm Ben. So let's head down to the state for real deal, for real, second SPL, second SPL, Long Island Regional. Regional number two places, two places, Despite, 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 teams weren't the start of the show, or were they? Team 340 Greater Rochester Robotics took the top spot and took the number two ranked team, 3015 Ranger Hold Robotics. On. Apparently and there's a really bad echo before you do anything. All right. Is it better? Okay, we fixed it. You can continue. Should I start over? Or... I don't know. Okay, I'll start. I just, I'll... Just... Yeah, well. the School of Business Partnerships of Long Island Regional Number no. Two took this place took place this past weekend at Hofstra University. Despite this event being in Long Island, the Long Island teams weren't the star of the show, or were they? Team Three Forty Greater Rochester Robotics took the top spot and took the number two ranked team Thirty Fifteen Ranger Robotics, another Rochester area team, to join their alliance. Predictably, the now number two alliance captain, Team Eight Seventy Rice, picked Seventy Ninety Six the Robo Tigers. Between just those four teams, three of them already had bat winners banners, with 3015 holding a red medal for a finalist appearance. Outside of those two alliances, no one was too impressed, however. In fact, pretty much every playoff match against the number one and two alliance were blowouts. However, there's an interesting headline. The number three alliance of 810, 3171, and 533 amassed two red cards, eliminating them both, eliminating them both from their two quarterfinal matches. Personally, I've never seen something like this, and I can't imagine how it feels to be one of those teams. The finals were pretty fun, though. The first two final matches were separated by a combined two points, and neither were a tie, so both were one single point matches. Wow. This led to a wow. finals match set up to be a really fun one. I encourage everyone to go and find this match and actually watch it, but once again, it was a close one separated by five points, with the number two alliance of 870, 1796, and 3624 coming out on top. Team 564 Longwood Robotics ended up winning the Chairman's Award, after winning the EI award just three days earlier at SPPLI 1, and 6806 took home the EOI award this time. 40 teams, 40 to teams stage fighting for the crucial crucial at the UNH 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 at the Wait, hold on. Yep, that's right. 319 and 885 paired up again, just like they did at Southern New Hampshire back in week three. Okay, the number hold one on. Seat. The echo is back. Really? Uh -oh. Oh, no, it's gone now. It's back. Okay. Wait, I don't know. Chad is telling me things. Interesting. Really? <laughs> huh. Let's okay. keep rolling then. We'll just keep going. <laughs> the number one seed uh, faced off against the eight seed of 63-67, the Electrolytes, 151 Tough Tex, and 1350 Rambots. Number one seed would easily beat them advancing to the semis where they would where they met the number four seed of 501 Power Knights, 1058 PVC Pirates, and 6324 Blue Devils. Again, they were no match for the number one alliance. Each alliance took a home took a home win in the Hold on a second. The finals. It would be <laughs> the number one seed against the red alliance. Uh, the number one seed would be the red alliance against the number three seed in blue. The three seed was made up of 2370 iBots, 1922 Osram, and 6691 Torque. Each alliance took a win, bringing us to a third match. It was neck and neck. Teams were scoring left and right, technology flying all around the field. Everything would come to an end for the number one seed 
as 509 missed their level three climb and 319 missed their level two climb, leaving the number three alliance to go home with the blue banners. During the awards, 1073, the force team picked up their EI, and 1058, PVC Pirates picked up chairmans. Congratulations, everyone. Well done, well done. All right, before we, All right, before before we, before we leave you in H, I think, think we have to talk about the two double ramp bots that got to I level two. I completely forgot. How? Oh, oh my God. man. It's so, um, so I know the, uh, the, so the drive coach of 5962, he's an alum of my team. Um, they did not practice that before wow that just happened um they had a they had a camera pole on their robot that they actually had to chop down because they would be above the alliance station wall but they had their rsl on there so apparently they plugged like a, a soldering iron directly into a battery next to the side of the field and just soldered their rsl back on <laughs> so i mean if it works <laughs> but hey i mean that that Electrical paid off tape? big time I, uh, yeah <laughs> but man now that, that was a sight to see uh, yeah i mean it's been on like every single social media for frc that i've seen like it got on the first inspires official one as like the headline yes uh so, like, well pretty cool yeah, stuff. vision stick vision stick <laughs> <laughs> all right so I'm going to go ahead and move on to Ben Salem now here. So prior to this week, FMA Springside Chestnut Hill had the highest average qualification match score. But this week, Ben Salem took that slot, averaging 64.42 points per match, which is the highest qualification match score of all FRC events so far. Qualifications were super exciting with a 62.9% HAB3 rate. We had a completed rocket rate of 7.3% super high and six unicorn matches. 2590 Nemesis had a brand new working HAB3 climb and an improved game piece manipulator, which helped them to take this top seed for most of the weekend. 1807 featured a new two hatch on the front of the cargo ship Sandstorm as well, which helped them to seed super high also. At the end, however, uh, a loss and a strong finish by, um, by 2590 uh, pushed 2607 into the top position. 2607 was back from their first ever F from their uh, first FMA showing uh, since their finalist finish against 2791 and 195 at Central New York, and they were back to play super hard here as well. 2607 selected 1640 Sabotage, fresh off their second FMA win, and they rounded out the alliance with Team 219, Team Impact. The number two alliance, led by 2590, selected two-time finalist and number one pick team uh, 1807 redbird robotics as their first selection and they rounded it out with 7599 blue pride playoff rounds at ben salem were very exciting so the number one alliance was taken out of the quarterfinals through defense by a very strong number eight seed that had uh, 708 as the d-bot hatters robotics 272 the cyber crusaders and 321 the rebel lancers and much of the success was attributed to the defense of 708 Quarters two and three both went to three matches, <coughs> and strong teams like 5401, 303, 341, and 5404 were eliminated in quarters and semis. Several teams showed dramatic improvement and changes since the earlier competition season, such as 316 now has a new suction cup, uh, similar to the 1619 one, um, and 341 and 5401's high-level uh, performance also you know, was greatly improved over their previous event. In the semis, uh, the number two alliance subbed out 7599 uh, for 555 Montclair Robotics. The number two and number eight alliances would meet in the finals, where ultimately the number two alliance would uh, withstand the defense and take it all. So congrats to 2590, 1807, 7599, and 555, as well as 1391, the Metal Moose, for winning the Chairman's Award. 1391 had previously before this event not qualified for the FMA district champs and they managed to do it here on their third play by winning this award and their robot has dramatically improved over the last couple events so they totally deserve it. Also congrats to 708 for the double silver clink bring by winning EI. So I predicted that SPVLI won was going to be a very low scoring affair and I was pretty much correct. The average match score was just shy of 50 with the average winning score only six points higher. This is four points lower than the match average and nine points lower than the average winning score when you look at all of FRC uh, and the finals were, or the, rather the playoffs were even farther in terms of disparity. SPVLI 2 by comparison was within one to two points of the average for the week. So basically SPVLI 1 was pretty weak despite being in the same geographical area. 
Team 3646 ranked number one and picked Team 11, which looked like a fairly solid alliance, but the number two lines of 26, 38, 1468, and 6911 ended up winning the event. Also, big congratulations to Team 353, the Pobots, for their well-deserved Chairman's Award. Nice. So let's head over to uh, the right a little bit and go into the New England district. Uh, so 78, they were the team to beat coming into this district. They're currently at the head of New England district points, and rightfully so. They've got this absolutely fantastic robot, rank one winner at Southeast Mass, rank one and winner at uh, Ride this year, and they sought to repeat that this weekend with Central Mass. By the end of Saturday, they had the first seed with uh, 125, the Neutrons, on their heels. Uh, Saturday afternoon, they invited them to their alliance and flew through eliminations. Uh, they scored at least 23, uh, 63 points, not 23, wow. Uh, and at most 84, all while under some pretty hefty defense. Finals got a bit closer with a three-point difference in the first match against the powerful alliance of 1,195 and 3,205, with 1,100, the captain, uh, actually being the defense robot there. But in the end, it would be the first seed that took it. So congrats to 78, 125, and 63, 28. Uh, great job to you guys. Man, like 78, let's just take it back here. It's three banners, all from the first seed captain. Man, I cannot wait to see them compete at District Champs. Uh, just a few short weeks. All right, so moving on to Montgomery. Um, so this is the other event that happened in FMA this weekend. It didn't go as deep as Ben Salem this week, but it was still a very deep event going in with defense occurring in almost every qualification match. The best defense robot of the event, uh, rightfully so even, uh, 747 Flight Crew actually seated first with their super consistent and fat, uh, with their super consistent defense and very fast level three climb. They selected Pennsylvania Powerhouse 225 Tech Fire to their alliance and rounded it out with the second score with a, a second scoring robot, 50, uh, 4653 Iron Men. They met the number six alliance featuring 1403 Cougar Robotics, uh, 3637 the Daleks, and 2577 Pingree Robotics in the finals, where the number one alliance won in two matches. Strong teams like 56 or uh, like 56. 1676, 222, 223, 220, uh, or 25, 3314, 1923, 41, and 1279 made a good showing through the playoff rounds. Congrats to 3637 with the gold silver cling bling by winning the Chairman's Award. All right, guys, time for the discussion topic. We're going to talk about defense and just how that's being played about this game. I believe, Ben, are you starting us off? Uh, I don't believe it's me. I believe it's, uh, it's that, Connor. That would be Connor me, star <laughs> Right. So, man, defense is insane with hardly any protected zones this this year. It really leaves those defensive robots a lot to like rain terror on the field. Uh, 166 played a lot of defense this weekend. We had some breaks for most of the event, which was unfortunate, but uh, it, it came in handy and we won a couple matches along with that, too. Um, if you if you know how to put teams into really good chokeholds and play strategic defense without getting penalties you are looking very good as a second pick within the seeds of one through four especially and you could you could go far in the limbs with that um that's all i got for defense yeah it's it's very 2014 out there for those of you who were around during that time um there's completely legal hits going on all over the place but uh, if you don't secure the stuff in your robot well enough, sometimes even just the shot going through your frame can cause damage inside. So it, it's there's there's parts of it that are on you to protect, but obviously if a robot is sticking its arm in the innards of your robot, it's time to go in that question box as quickly as possible and say, hey, you know this happened here. It, it's the refs are getting better at distinguishing what's what's legal and what's not. I will say that we had one of. Uh, you know, the best uh, shout out to the head ref that we had at Montgomery, Jason, who really, uh, I believe that's his name, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, someone in the chat, but, um, you know, he, he really knew what was going on there. And um, he, he really did, could distinguish between what should be a yellow card and what should not. And hopefully more refs kind of start moving in that direction as we, as we go here. Yeah. So with this game in particular, um, and especially with how they've been calling fouls recently at some of the events like SVPLI, I know had some uh, kind of sketchy fouls. 
um, defense is kind of necessary to this game and how it flows, even if it's becoming more uh, less less of a thing that more teams want to play because of the yellow cards. Uh, so this game, you really just need so much flow to play triple offense. Um, there's quite a, a way to play it, and it needs to be three very experienced teams who like know where you're going at all points in the match, um, which is just not feasible for so many alliances in this game. Um, this game flows with defense and counter defense. Uh, you need one robot on the other side of the field. Um, and it's difficult to get rid of. And it's interesting how this weekend it's really played out that some regionals have gotten rid of defense with the yellow cards that have been fa happening and how that's affected scores and how it's affected the meta of the game. Yeah, I mean, the yellow cards and red cards is interesting. Honestly, if, if I look back at a lot of them, as, as someone who has refed quite a few events in the past, hasn't refed this year, I just don't get him. I don't get how you can, you know, take it, tell, explain to a team within the confines of the rule uh, that they are cards. I just, it doesn't line up. Um, it comes back to, I think, you know, 2014 is a good example where teams were literally going across a full field and just going right into another robot, which is just legal. It's, you know, and as terrible as that is, you know, it could really destroy someone's robot. It's not illegal. Um, and I think just with the safe zones in this game or really the lack of safe zones in this game, it's just too good. It's just too much, too effective to play defense on robots. I mean, when a robot's going up too high to place, you know, and it's a rocket, it's just so easy to hit them out just a couple inches. And with such a small goal, it's, you know, it's going to be hard for them to score. So it's, it's just too effective. Um, and defense is just going to continue to be played. For sure. Uh, before we go to our next topic, uh, Siobhan MD 07, 5962 hits like a truck. Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> For sure, it's those rhino, it's those uh, raptor tank treads that that was their saving grace and their defense right there. Uh, so, so now going into the FRC region top ten for the Northeast, uh, we have two separate lists this week. The first list includes voters from all regions, and the second list is for the Northeast Pacific voters. So looking at our all around for votes, we in the first seed, we in the first place we have three forty Greater Rochester Robotics. Number two, 870 Rice, three, 1796 Robo Tigers, Ooh. four, 3015 Ranger Robotics, five, 125 Neutrons, six, 78 Airstrike, seven, 2590 Nemesis, eight, 225 Techfire, nine, 1807 Redbird Robotics, and 10, 271 Mechanical Marauders. So in our in our New England specific, we have Team, we have New England first... specific. I, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Not just I, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just like all of you. I'm so sorry. Northeast specific. Wow. <laughs> Number one would be, I'm sorry. Number one is 870 Rice, two, 1796 Robo Tigers, three, Greater Rochester, four, 3015 Ranger, five, 2590 Nemesis, six, 1807 Redbird, seven, 225 Tech Fire, eight, 78 Airstrike. Nine seven forty seven flight crew and ten sixteen forty sabotage. Yeah, so I really like seeing both lists. It's interesting yeah. how um, teams kind of swap. Yeah, it's very different how um, you know see, seeing what in the region how they look at things and how out of the region looks things too. Um, but to uh, to call it a couple teams here seven forty seven. This is their first time in the list. It's great to see them on there as one of the best debots that I've ever seen. Um, it's great for them just to get some love. Um, it's great to see 1807 on the list uh, because they're probably scoring more raw game pieces than any team in FMA right now. So um, I'm very glad that the voters voted them up there. And uh, uh, 2590, 225 made dramatic improvements from our last two go around. So, um, you know, lots of lots of great teams in FMA. And it's going to be a very exciting FMA champs coming up this next week. No. So I've got a shout out to 1796. They've moved from up from 10th place to I think it's like second or third this week. Mm -hmm. uh, the Robe Tigers. I love them. I think they've got a great robot. They're going to do fantastic at champs. They're really, really overlooked in the FRC community and they just need more love. I, they're just so good this year. <laughs> All right. Talk about another team that I think 
could use some love. And it's it's really nice to see 870 take the top spot and the list of teams that voted from our region. I mean, they were finalists in 2018 as an Alliance captain as well as finalists in 2016 as an Alliance captain. And in 2014, 2015, and 2017, they were, they were really one of the best teams in Long Island. Um, and it's just really awesome to see that they finally got that breakthrough and they are being recognized as one of the best teams in the region. Um... Uh, before I before I go for my pick, where's 319, 2370, 1922, 509? They're not in this list, guys. Now, this is where I can say New England. New England people, <laughs> vote. It is so important. If you want to have if you if you want these teams to be in our top 10 or even in the top 25 for tomorrow night's show, you gotta vote. Come on, people. Yeah. You, you you were pretty good the last few weeks, Connor. So yeah, I'm I mean, glad that we week, got yeah. a turn. Last week, eight yeah, of the ten were from New England, so I was okay with that. I mean, we finally got like the Mar teams to vote, so you know, have to balance the New York right. teams. Make sure you vote next week too. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, um, I got to go with 78 airstrike. Uh, three events this season. Number three. Uh, they've been number one seed every single time in three events. They have 154 district points, beating out the old record in New England of 152, and they just keep getting better. Uh, they should win district champs, and they, they're going to go far at Detroit this year. Uh, nothing but the best for 78. Good deal. That's pretty good. Um, now let's talk about the events going into next week. So we're going to start with our first event, the FMA district champs. So many Ooh. of the top players. Oh, yeah. It's going to be super exciting. <laughs> yeah. Many of the uh, top players for this event played this past weekend, and we'll get to see FMA's top 60 teams playing here. We might not see teams like 341 because they're already qualified for champs and choose not to attend, which is unfortunate that they aren't there to play with the best in FMA guys. You really got to play at this event, you know, you, just because you're Hall of Fame. Sorry. Yeah, a little bit of a diss there, but, you know, you, you know, it, it'd be great to have you there. Um Many teams will be capable of soloing a rocket not under defense that will be at this event, but the winners are going to be determined by who has the best defense, who uh, handles defense the best, and who also can just basically survive the playoff rounds like we saw this past weekend. It really gets into an all-out brawl sometimes at FMA events. So, um, you know, hopefully the, whoever, as you plan your alliance selections, everyone takes a look at really, really looking who can handle the defense. So on that... I want to call out some of the best defense bots that we've seen in FMA because um, it seems to be a really important quality this year. We have obviously 747 that we've talked about earlier. Uh, we had 2191 flux core, uh, 4454. We got uh, 708 and 1279 uh, are all super great defense bots that we've seen. We've got rocket bots like 225, 1640, 2539, 1676, 303. 5401, 1403, 1923, 3314, 223, and 2607 are some of the highlights that we've got there. We've got some other strong robots who've you know shown some capability and probably can extend beyond that, like uh, that are also really good robots like 1807, 25, 2590, and 5404. And there's others haven't even listed. It's gonna be a really insane event. I probably listed off 24 teams there. Some of those teams probably aren't even gonna make eliminations. Um, because that's how this works at FMA District Champs. Um, we're going to be very good robots left out of the playoff rounds, and it's going to be super exciting. Make sure you tune in. Can I just say, Ben? Yeah. I'm very impressed that you've called it FMA this entire broadcast. Yeah. I'm very proud of you. Yes. I'm, I'm really <laughs> been fighting to do that here because, you, you know, we, we got to call it by what it's actually called now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's not still Mar? Oh. Nah. No, it's FMA. Oh man, <laughs> unfortunate. All right, so I'm gonna so we're gonna power through this. Uh, we're starting to run low on time here, but uh, we got 32 teams going to the Pine Tree event in Lewiston, Maine. We got so uh, we have four teams are competing this weekend that have already played two events, so their district points don't count at this event. Uh, some awesome teams to keep an eye out for this weekend include 133, 238, 1519, 1768, 3467, 5564, 5687, and it's supposed to be 6329. Uh, 133 has already played two events. They're looking for redemption after a finalist appearance at Rhode Island the other week. 1519 is looking to add some more points to their season. They have a fantastic robot once again, but their drivers need to push it faster and further if they want a chance to if they want to stand a chance this weekend against this tough competition. 
5687, easily their best robot. Two district wins on the number one alliance this year, and they are hungry for one more win. Good luck to all teams competing at their last attempt to qualify for the New England District Championship at WPI. All right, so New York City this year is yet again going to be uptown at the Armory. The event once again is headlined by Team 694, Stipulse, and 1796, the Robo Tigers. Team, thir team 333, the Megalodons, also continuously shows up to impress. Outside of those three teams, there aren't any clear standouts. I'd probably put quite a bit of money on 694 and 1796 aligning and winning the event. And honestly, I hope someone could prove me wrong. The NYC is historically very shallow, and maybe this year will be a little different. All right, so over to Hartford. Everyone's waiting for 195. At some point, they're going to take off, and this might be the event. They've got this one event before District Champs, and they've already pretty much qualified. So this is the event where it's going to click for them. I'm calling it now. This season's really been reminding me of their 2016 season where they made Einstein. So, you know, looking forward to some great stuff from them. Looking to upset them from seating higher is Team 230, the Gale Hawks. They did it at Western NE, and they'll do it again and maybe get to pick them this time. Also of note, we've got some excellence teams to throw into the fray. 2067, Apple Pie, 3146, Granby Grunts, 190, and 177, who's got their second play here, and they're looking to qualify for district champs. So it's going to be a fun little preview of the district championships to come, and I'm looking forward to it. You're looking forward to it. So be sure to turn, tune in. Right, so that's going to do it for us. Uh, thanks to everyone who watched. If you want more FIRST Robotics in your life and you like what we do here, all that we ask is that you let others know about the show and that this is the place to go for more FRC in their lives. If you got a few bucks to throw at us, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted just to have you here. On behalf of, on behalf of myself, Ben, Sam, Connor, and our producer, Nick, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to stay tuned and keep updated with our new uploads. We've got some awesome Behind the Bumpers videos coming at you, taken by our incredible floor crew, Nikki and Howard, over the weekend in FMA. Our next show will be the Sweet Tea Recap, and we'll see you next week on Nor'easter Region Recap. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.